everybody staring at me. <laughs> I hope you brought a Bible with you to church. Amen. I'll be reading out of the old authorized King James Version. Amen. I must say it's an 1883 edition by... Dr. Shriver that translated the old King James English into modern English. So if that don't light your fire, that don't necessarily mean your wood's wet. If you have your Bibles with you, turn to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 4. And only going to read one verse of Scripture and refer to the rest. Nehemiah chapter 4. Verse number 9. Nevertheless, that's my message title and the fundamental direction of the word for you today. Nevertheless, Amen. we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. Heavenly Father, I pray for the liberty, the anointing of the Holy Ghost to preach the gospel, to say what need be said at Bible Way Assembly that exalts the Lord Jesus Christ and edifies a body of believers. In Jesus' great and mighty name we pray, amen and amen. When you read the book of Nehemiah, it seems to escape many people that is a record of one of the greatest miracles in the Old Testament. That a band a remnant of believers coming out of bondage from Babylon came to Jerusalem that had been ramshacked and destroyed 70 years earlier. In so much that a donkey couldn't walk down the streets for the debris. In 70 years, well, when Nehemiah arrived, it was really 96 years earlier when Nebuchadnezzar's army had invaded Israel and had taken the city of Jerusalem and totally destroyed it. The Bible said Nebuchadnezzar left the poor of the people in the land as vine dressers and gathers of the olive trees. And in 96 years, Nobody had done anything to restore the city of Jerusalem. When Nebuchadnezzar took the city, they tore the walls around the city down. They didn't throw it, the debris outward. They threw it inward, making the streets impassable. Boulders that weighed up to 40 tons littered the streets. The Jew that had been remaining in the city had been there for 96 years. They looked at it as total destruction. There's no way, nobody could set up again the walls, put up the gates, put locks on them, it was a total hopeless situation, but Nehemiah. He was still in Babylon. 
after 96 years, he, I don't know how old he was, but he'd been there a long time, and he constantly was inquiring of the city. What's the condition of the city now? And Nehemiah chapter 1 and chapter 2 said that he had received news. It was all bad. The city is still in disarray. Nobody has attempted to clean up anything. And so Nehemiah obtained leave and went to Jerusalem. The Bible said he parked his donkey on the outside of the city. It's got to be bad, destruction-wise, when a donkey can't get through. And Nehemiah climbed over the debris and the destruction and wept. And then he set to work with a remnant of a handful of believers. They set themselves busy to restore the city. At the time, fourth chapter, Sam Ballot, that has been appointed as an overseer over the whole region of Israel and Judah. The Bible said Sam Ballot, the Horite, which was simply gave his genealogy being a member of a city called Beth Haven. We don't know if he was a Jew or if he was a transplant from Babylon's empire. But we do know that Sam Ballot hated the Jew. That's right. And he incorporated for a helpmate Tobiah the Amorite, bearing in mind that the word of God said that an Amorite shall never have part in the worship of Jehovah. Never. They had blasphemed the Holy Ghost. He has moved off and left them. And Tobiah received a commission that now he is overseer over the entire land of Judah. And then to top this off, the fourth chapter of Nehemiah said that Samballot and Tobiah had backing the Arabians. They had been renowned enemies of Israel for centuries. And then the Arabians incorporated the Astrites. They were just common thieves. Take all of that into consideration. All of the political climate in the days of Nehemiah, they were completely surrounded by enemies. Yeah. Enemies themselves had been enemy to each other, but have unified in one cause. To prevent the Jew from restoring the city of Jerusalem and offering again the sacrifices under Jehovah God. It was a very bleak picture. As a matter of fact, the Bible said in chapter 4, verse 1, when Samballat heard that Nehemiah had come with a commission from Xerxes the king, to restore the city of Jerusalem, Samballot was wroth and took great indignation against the Jews. And then comes four principles, four foundational facts of the attack of Satan against the believer, against the church. The first thing you get born again, the first thing you're going to put up with 
is intimidation. You're going to be made fun of. You're going to be told there isn't anything to your Christian experience. When intimidation don't work, Satan will invoke the second principle. He not only ridicules and mocks the believer, he incorporates a second aspect. He not only is mocking, not only ridiculing your stand, he ridicules the work. You can't do anything in your society. The drugs are too great. The sin is too predominant. But on every town and city. You know, we used to remember back when they used to, David Wilkerson and such preach, man, there was a height of sin in New York City and every major metropolitan city that boggled the mind, but not anymore. That type sin is found on the streets of Foley, Alabama. It's everywhere. Is the church so intimidated and mocked and ridiculed that it is afraid to take a stand? I pastored a man that claimed to have been living for Jesus for 36 years at that time. One of his fellow workers on job was diagnosed with terminal cancer and only given a few months to live. And my brother went and said, I'm going to pray for you. And after 36 years of working side by side, the brother, the man dying with the cancer said to the brother, are you a Christian? 36 years of rubbing shoulders side by side, working on machines, break time, lunch time, and in 36 years, nobody ever knew that this man was a Christian. Well, if fact would be told, he wasn't a Christian. You can't live for Jesus 36 years and nobody know about it. There is no such thing as secret Christians he said, Jesus speaking, no man lights a candle and hides it under a bushel, but it's set up on the hill, and it's a light to the city. So Nehemiah must deal with 96 years of the establishment of resistance of hell itself Against the people of God, the purpose of God, the city of God. Come on. Sam Ballot wasn't satisfied with just mocking the Jew. Yeah. He started out in verse number two, he mocked the sacrifice. The world has no drawbacks that prevent them from talking about even the Lord Jesus Christ. They lamb blast the sacrifice. They mock you for what you believe. You believe Jesus died and Three days later, he arose from the dead. He ascended up on high. He sat down at the right hand of the Father. He sent gifts unto men. He's there right now as our mediator. The world mocks at. They 
they mock the sacrifice. But Sam Ballot wasn't satisfied with that. As far as he is concerned, he's got the Jew where he wants them. He's nailing nails in their coffin. He mocked them, mm -hmm. the Omiah and the band of remnant believers. He mocked the work. What do you think you're going to change, Foley, Alabama, with a sermon? No, but we can change it with the gospel. This gospel works anywhere. Yes, sir. It works in all circumstances. Yeah. It works in all conditions. Right. As a matter of fact, the worse the condition, the greater manifestation you have from this gospel. Right. Amen. Some of you need to stir up by way of remembrance how you work. You wasn't found at some high point in life where the wine and the money was a flowing. Most of you were found in the gutter, headed down and headed out. No hope, perishing, but Jesus come by. Thank God he can save unto the uttermost. Well, Nehemiah mocked the sacrifice. He mocked the task. Then he mocked the material. Do they think, those pitiful little band of believers, that they can restore the city, restore the walls with such debris? A donkey can't even walk down the street. I mean, it's total destruction. Nehemiah climbed over it and wept. Nevertheless, yeah. some of you need to learn that word again. Come on. Regardless of what you're going through, regardless of how severe the attack of Satan is, against your life, against your family, against you as a whole, nevertheless, make your prayer unto God and stand up. Come on, preach. Preach. Sam Ballot pointed out all of the debris it seems like the church world has got caught up in pointing out the debris, the destruction, and are almost left people in the church with a hopeless mentality. There's nothing that we can do. Hogwash on that. Them that believe they can't do nothing, don't ever do anything. Ninety-six years, the remnant of Israel that stayed in the land never moved one stone out of the street. Made no effort whatsoever. Why in the world do you seek counsel for that? Man, I painted a very bleak picture without politically. They're all unified now. What had at one time been all enemies. You've got Sam Ballot, the Asinite. You've got Tobiah, the Amorite. You've got the Arabians, which were noted thieves. The Arabians are not noted as a conquering force in human history. They were noted to steal your camels, your sheep, your oxen, and 
They were involved in the slave trade. They were noted to steal their little Jewish babies and sell them to the highest bidder. I mean, what kind of a unity is that? It sounds like the unity that our nation is at presently experiencing. They got the Acidites. Who are they? My goodness, I can't even say their name right. Their definition is a band of thieves. A band of thieves have joined with the Arabians, man stealers, to Sambalat and to Bayah, and totally compass the city of Jerusalem. There's nothing nobody can do but God. God can do anything and then we must put a comma through the lives of the believers. If anything's going to happen coming from heaven in Foley, Alabama, he's going to God minister through a blood-bought church. And I'm not here to preach it Bible Way Assembly is the only church in Foliary. Right. But I do know God's hand is on us here. Amen. And has been down through the years. He hadn't forsook us. Hadn't walked off. And the challenge still rings loud and clear to the believer in this assembly. If you'll pray, if you will sell out to Christ, there is no limit to what you can do for Jesus right. in this area. That's right. Good preaching. Good preaching. So, Sam Ballot, verse 3, chapter 4. Now Tobiah the Amorite was by and said, Why these feeble Jews? They just got a little sanctuary side of Highway 98. Obscure. They aren't a fighting force at all. And whatever they do, whatever they build, a fox can run through it anywhere. Nehemiah said, nevertheless, yes, in spite of what the political arena says, in spite of what the political arena does, yes. in spite of their alignments, yeah. and don't tell me politics hasn't teamed up with the Arabians yeah. and the Ashdites. Ask dot at. I say it different every time. <laughs> <laughs> they have all joined up. They're teamed up against who? Against God. That's right. yeah. Thereby, you are on the post office wall as enemy number one. You can get ready for the ridicule. You can get ready for the mockery. You can get ready for them to say no to everything that you know God has said do. Nehemiah, perhaps he needed a little encouragement, even though. Verse number 9, he said, Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto the Lord. Verse number 10 says, Nehemiah approached the Jews that had been left in the land. Maybe you've done that. Maybe you've turned to the religious movements of your generation. 
and sought for help. I had a man call me, and I'm not going to call no names because it wasn't in Alabama or Florida, but it was close. He's a sincere man of God. And he had approached his presbyter about reaching out evangelistically to the community, the town, the city he lives in, which is a very larger city than Foley and smaller than Mobile, but this population, probably 35,000 people. And his presbyter told him, Son, the first thing you've got to establish that you're a passionate church, you are not evangelistic. Don't worry about getting out. Just preach a little sermon on Sunday To which my pastor friend interrupted the presbyter and said, we still have Sunday night and Wednesday. And we have a Friday night prayer meeting. The old presbyter said, my God. My pastor friend said, that's exactly what I feel. If God don't do it, it can't get done. But that's a mindset right. of the religious order that's doing nothing about what's going on in the streets. Right. They don't care about your family. I, I'm not here throwing rocks at boards and presbyters and bishops. I remember when it come out in the mid early 2000s that all us ordained men, now we can go on to be a bishop if we just take the course and pay the price. And so I got nominated by a group of bishops in the Philippines. They said they just you just got to be a bishop. I said, what's the benefits of being a bishop? They said to me, what's the benefits of not being a bishop? I said, well, I can fill that in. Is being a bishop going to give me a greater leeway, a pulpit to preach in? No, no, no. Look out. Nehemiah turned to the Jew that had been in the land for 96 years and sought for advice, and guess what they told him? Just calm down. You can read it. Read verse 10 down to verse 12. Just calm down. Don't make waves. You're going to attract some kind of problems. You're probably going to be attacked. They're going to come in from ten different ways all at once and wipe you out. Don't make any... I'm telling you, Nehemiah, here he is. He's in the city that's destroyed. A donkey can't walk down the streets. They're surrounded by four armies politically around the environment of Jerusalem and he turned to those that had been in the way for 96 years and they said, hey, don't make no waves. Yeah. If you do, we'll be attacked and they'll come from 10 different ways at once and totally wipe you out. Nehemiah then said, well, I guess I ain't going to get no help from the Jews. And Judah, I'll go to the nobles. A 
All he's doing is putting a period everywhere that it's a dead end street. The answer is still in verse 9. Nevertheless, I made my prayer unto God. Regardless of what's going on politically, regardless of where the normal church is at, regardless of what they're all standing for and all patting each other on the back and not trying to offend nobody, they stand in resistance against the will of God and the church of the living God. Nehemiah said, nevertheless, we made our prayer unto God. We posted watches both day and night against them. you got to look out. The world is our enemy. We were building a new church some years ago. It wasn't a little complex. It was a big one. We started out by the Sunday school plan. I went to the county commissioners and solicited them to give me the permits so that we could build in the state of Florida in the county of Santa Rosa. And the first thing they told me said, you can't build anything. One of the commissioners alluded that we couldn't even build a pump house without a permit issued by the county. I said, well, we're going to build, and it's going to be more to pump house. You can go ahead and send me the paperwork. And they looked down their nose at me as though I'm a lesser human. They mocked me. They outright laughed at me. And I said, laugh if you will. But God told us to build. We need a Sunday school plan. How much that going to cost you, preacher, pastor? I said, the best I can tell, about 200000 That ought to be enough. They said, we won't give you the permit unless you get a letter from a bank or a mortgage company that you have access to $200,000. You've got to have that letter before you can even get the permits. So what we do? We prayed. And I went to the bank and said, we want to build a Sunday school plant. I need a letter that we got the money available if we need it, which we don't. How much money have you got right now, Pastor? I don't know. Maybe $500. And they said, you want us to give you a letter stating that we will back a $200,000 building and you ain't got $500 to start with I said all I need is a letter I don't want your money why they done it I have to contribute it to God's intervention they give me the letter and we stead in the building six months down the road the Sunday school plant was built, 20 classrooms, top of the line, and all paid for. Didn't know a dime on it. Went back and said, uh, we want to build a new sanctuary. How many will it see? About 2,000. They all took a double look. How much money you got? I think with the Sunday school plant, we had about $500. With the new sanctuary, I imagine we can probably raise $100. <laughs> we ain't got no money. I went back to the bank, asked them to 
give me a letter. We ain't going to do it. I said, well, I'll come back next week. They said the same thing will be told next week that's being told today. We will not. I come back next week. Somebody must eat too many turnip greens or something because they've had an entire change of heart. They give me the letter. We set in the building. The building's still sitting down there now. Amen. Building and finished it. I'm talking about we sometimes are influenced more highly by the world than we are in the knowledge of the will of God. If it's God's will, what's the world got to do with it? They will always be in resistance to the will of God because they are part of the satanic kingdom. Somebody said, well, you're being very gruff towards the political system. I am. They're wrong. Completely. They're wrong. They don't sit around and contemplate evil. They don't have board meetings and sit around and say, what can we do to be against the church or the Christian? No, they don't. But legislation. Have you not noticed that with the problem going on in Russia going to invade and all of a sudden all the legislation and implementation of laws that were anti well-being unconstitutional has all suddenly by Democrat and Republican been thrown out the window What is it? It's a ploy. That's all. It's midterm elections. There ain't anybody going to get elected to any office that's going to implement the way and what has been done in the last two years in America. But they can all of a sudden put on a little white hat change all their rhetoric and dumb people voters in America will vote them back into office and it's going to be worse the next time around than it was this that's where it's going and in the midst of all of this there's the church set inside the road of highway 98 West of Foley, Alabama. We're making our prayer under our God. He, God, is unlimited. He can save to the uttermost. He's just waiting on us. Nehemiah said, nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and we set watches against the forces that are against us and they went to work with a remnant. Yeah. Just a handful of people. Now, I open the statements made in this message up to this point with these words. Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah, records one of the greatest miracles found in the Old Testament. Every miracle in the Old Testament was divine intervention of God independent of anyone or anything. But Nehemiah shows a miracle as a result of the church standing for what is right and rising up to work. 
what had not been accomplished or done or established in 96 years. Devastation and desolation was the year mark. The Bible said in Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 15, 52 days later, the walls are erected. The gates are rehung. The locks on the gates. The church now stands fortified in resistance to everything that Sambalat, Tobiah, the Arabians, the Asadots, what all that they had decreed is found fallacy. It couldn't do it. They rose 52 days. Look, the stones that are thrown down into the streets of Jerusalem are weighing per stone 40 tons. No wonder nobody tried to run. How can we do it? I, can't, I, just, I just couldn't move a 40 ton stone. One leg and one arm that don't work. What can you do with two legs and two arms? Right. Nothing. But I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Amen. It's yet to be seen in my generation what the church can accomplish in the Holy Ghost in the streets of our city. I got... Forehead shakes affirmative. Red saying, I don't know whether what, what is he talking about? I'm talking about rising up, laying hold to God. Pray like we have never prayed before. What happened in Nehemiah's day, in 52 days, 40 ton stones by the thousand that littered the streets. They throwed the walls down inward, not outward. That just made it easier to build again. It is recorded in Scripture and by history that 25 miles off the Temple Mount outside the environs of Jerusalem, the city, 25 miles away on a sunny day, that the stones that Nehemiah's group refurbished and reused and set up the walls, the sun hit that city. And 25 miles away, it radiated out a light by burnt stones. I'm talking about God saying to you and I, the latter end shall be greater than the beginning. Amen. We are in for a ride. Yes. On all points, politically, they're against us. Yeah. It is said that the church can't do anything in modern civilization and culture. I'm telling you, modern civilization or not, the church can still do the will of God. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Nothing shall be impossible. Don't be so discouraged. Quit looking around for the church down the street or across town or headquarters to come to your rescue. Lay hold to God and pray. Be led of the Spirit of God. If the Lord says do it, then do it. If He said don't do it, don't. I do have part two to this message.
and I want to start out right now with it, but I think we'll wait till five o'clock. <laughs> then uh, you, some of you will be sighing a sigh of relief because you don't plan on coming, and you won't get part two. <laughs> And then some was planning on being here. <laughs> and you're already checking your phone. Maybe you got a, a son or daughter has sent you a text. Somebody will be here if Jesus tarries. Nehemiah said, nevertheless, bringing it back down to you personally, what? Have you and are you encountering that's hindering you? COVID. Man, I got sick, I'm telling you. And I ain't never in my life had so many preachers say it. Have you got the test yet? I just want to shout from the housetop, the test is not a cure. Maybe I need to repeat that plainly. The test is not the cure. After 11 days of snotting around, and uh, I said, This is it. <laughs> this is the big one. <laughs> Thank God for a great wife. She come down with it. Five days, she blowed her nose and shook it off and went on. She liked to kill the rest of us because she come down with it first. <laughs> and all the rest of my family, every one of them could blow their nose after a few days, wipe off on their sleeve and walk on. I feel them fine. But the preacher. I like to have died. <laughs> and it didn't help my faith any at all for many of my preacher friends saying, have you been tested? I said, I don't have to get tested. I got it. <laughs> How do you know you got it? I said, you can't be as sick as I've been for 11 days in my head. <laughs> my faith is not dependent on a test. All right. All right. Amen. My faith is tested by the reality of something coming against my life. I'm going to live for God anyway. It doesn't matter what happens. I say that yes, Lord. until something happens to me. <laughs> I tell Sister Tyrod, I said, just get over it. It irritates me to no end because she'll get over it and then I get it. <laughs> and she repeats to me exactly what I said to her. Just get over it. Quint wimping around. I said, I'm, I am a handicap. She said, I've heard that all I want to hear. You and I experience what Nehemiah experienced personally. In spite of it all, You've got to come to the place where you say, it don't matter. Nevertheless, I'm going to live for God. Right. We was building that big building, and he come down, I was talking to the architect. He said, what kind of altar you want to design? I said, one goes all the way from wall to wall, and no break-in. He said, my God, preacher, do you realize the altar that you're designing is nearly two, two and a half foot tall and goes from wall to wall 
over a foot wide at the top. Do you realize that in order to get on the platform, you're going to have to climb over that altar? I said, that's exactly what I want. Nobody coming on the pulpit that ain't climbed over that altar. Now, time has come and left. I'm glad I designed that altar with several walkthroughs. Because I am at a point I couldn't even climb across it. It's easy to make your boast when you're not fighting at that moment. It's another thing to be under the gun. We live in a society, I believe it's almost universal worldwide. Everybody is scared to death if they sneeze, if they blow their nose. The Biden administration is sending out millions of test kits. I'll just tell you, you don't have to be tested. You'll know when you got it. Sister Tarbert tells me periodically, quit wimping around. Man up. I said, come around to my left side. <laughs> she said, what is it? I said, I'm going to knock the fool out of you. <laughs> Everybody tends to take the problem of life that you're having lightly. Well, I see that went over real well. Nobody really can understand the depth of the struggle that you are in. There's things that individuals encounter that I can laugh at. It had never been a problem to me. But don't let me catch you laughing at me and my problem. When I announce my problem, I want everybody to mourn. We cry between the porch and the altar. Lord, help your servant, David Talbert, he's got a problem. To God, that God would so touch our hearts that we had compassion one for another again. Lay hold to God. Nevertheless, that has to be something born of the Spirit of God in my life and in yours. To be able to look at the situation that you are personally involved in that you don't see no way out and to bow your knee and cry out from your heart. Nevertheless, Job said, Though God slay me, yet I'm going to serve him. Would you stand to your feet all over the house?